Hello, I'm uh, Nitin Dahad and I'm here at the Ola Electric uh, campus in uh, Bengaluru, in uh, Bangalore, in India. And um, I'm talking to Sambit Sahu, who is responsible for development of the AI uh, chips at Ola Krutrim. Hello, uh, Sambit, how are you? I'm doing good, Nitin. How are you doing? Good. So, uh, Sambit, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what Ola uh, Ola Electric is doing on, on the sort of chip side. You've got, you've just announced uh, three chips and, uh, but oh, well, four chips actually, uh, just a few weeks ago, and uh, then you, you've got you know, the whole stack that you're announcing. Sure, Nitin. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. It's always a great pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. So, uh, Ola is a group of companies: uh, Ola Cabs, uh, Ola Electric, and now Ola Kutrim. Yeah. And uh, I am part of Ola Kutrim. I am okay. the senior vice president, uh, leading the silicon design effort uh, in Ola Kutrim. Okay. And uh, we'll talk more about uh, the chips that we announced. Sure. And uh, our objective in Ola Kutrim is to deliver AI to India and the world. And we want to enable India to be a world leader in AI. OK. I mean, um, that's quite a broad picture. And I think your founder and CEO, uh, Bhavish Akhawal, is it? Uh, he's got this vision, grand vision of uh, doing something that is very India-centric and India-specific. Is that right? That's correct. That's correct. Uh, he has an amazing vision, and we are marching very along, very well along that vision. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I mean, maybe we'll go into the chips. But just, uh, I've interviewed you before when you were with Bodhi, and uh, you've got a very uh, strong background with Intel, both in the U.S. and here. Just tell me a little bit about your background, and then yeah, we can launch into the chips. Uh, sure. I have been doing silicon design for the last 35 years. Half of them in U.S. and uh, half of my time in India. Yeah. And in my life, I have had the privilege and opportunity to deliver many, many chips in many segments. Uh, I've delivered around 75 uh, chips in my life, uh, spanning servers, clients, smartphones, IoT, Edge, AI, all kinds of uh, chips, all kinds of technologies. And uh, I have been fortunate that uh, I have played a, an important role in all the major technology revolutions that has happened in the last 35 years. Uh, obviously, as part of Intel primarily, isn't that? Uh, Intel, uh, definitely, uh, I have had a long stint in Intel yeah. uh, in three different times. But I've also worked in uh, Qualcomm oh, yes, and yes. Sun Microsystems yes. and startups. And uh, now I'm part of Ola Kutrim. So when I last interviewed you, which was 2023, uh, you just started up Bodhi Computing and your relationship with Tenstorrent and RISC V. But I think uh, things changed since then. Actually, the long term, uh, great question. The long term vision hasn't changed uh, from when we started uh, Bodhi. Uh, and uh, we are still embarking on our AI journey on delivering AI chips. Uh, both at a server level as well as edge level, that hasn't changed. Uh, we started, when we started Bodhi, we started uh, discussing with uh, Bhavis that we felt uh, considering Bhavis's vision and aspirations and ambitions and the operation stability of Ola, uh, we decided that uh, I and my team will join Ola Kutrim. And uh, so we are still embarking on that vision. We're still embarking on that journey, it's just in a different way, different form, right. but the vision continues. So, so I mean, uh, f a, few, a few weeks ago, you uh, spoke at our Chiplet conference, the E-Times Chiplet conference. Uh, obviously, then you couldn't reveal a lot of the detail that you were going to announce uh, in just in a few weeks later. Uh, just tell us, uh, you know, there's, there's three chips you announced, but also a long term. Uh, so there's Bodhi 1, but then Bodhi 2 coming in 2028, but at, at different levels of the, of the stack. Yes. So we. We believe, and I believe the world also thinks the same way, there is a huge potential for AI, uh, particularly generative AI. Uh, as per market research, generative AI is uh, supposed to add $14 trillion economy to the global GDP. So that's a huge potential, both from an economic point of view and a society point of view. So also, we believe that AI has to be delivered in different forms, different factors, is what we call as pervasive AI. So right now, we are in a journey of building chips for the data center the, and chips for edge and chips for general purpose compute. So what we announced is four chips, Bodhi 1 coming out in 2026, 
and Bodhi 2 coming in 2028. And uh, Bodhi 2 is expected to be a, uh, the best in the world chip at that time in 2028. And also, uh, we want to make sure that AI is delivered to consumers. That's why it's important to build edge chips. So we announced OJAS, which will enable multiple of edge products. So a combination of AI server in the data center and edge chips, we should be able to deliver AI to pretty much everybody in India and the world. Now, the OJAS, I think, uh, from uh, what I understand, uh, it's kind of, you, you launched a sort of development kit so people can access uh, your AI server to, to develop their own products and applications, is that right? Uh, that's right. Oh, uh, we will be releasing prototypes and demo kits for people to start using over time. That's the, that's the objective. We showed a demo uh, in the last uh, uh, conference uh, that we conducted. You held that here, was, is that right? Uh, that was held in our factory, which is two hours from here. Okay. Yeah, so that was uh, the first demo. And as time progresses, we'll be releasing more demos, prototypes, and we'll be uh, enabling developers to okay. use our the prototypes for doing some of the early development. Right now, uh, so it, it goes layer by la layer. So right now, we have enabled certain models, cloud stack on third-party silicon, so that people can start using our stack and uh, the good news is that there has been huge interest, around 25,000 developers that are already accessing our stack right now. But this is with third-party silicon. And as we build our prototypes and our silicon, we will, we will start migrating to our prototypes so and silicon. That third-party silicon, is that FPGA based or is that how? how it no, that's third-party commercial silicon that's okay. uh, available from other leading companies uh, okay. who are building AI chips and general purpose chips. I mean, while we're on that subject, I mean, we'll, uh, we'll go on to some of the architectures in a minute, but you know, talking about silicon, um, I, th I think you're, you're still early stages, but you're looking for these chips at advanced technology nodes. Yes. Uh, and you're talking to all the various players at the moment. That's right. Absolutely. And uh, in the last conference, we announced two key partnerships. Uh, one is with ARM. We are collaborating with them on CPU technology and CPU architecture. And the other is with a very promising AI startup company called Antither.ai. Yes. And we are partnering with them to develop the AI technologies. And, and those partnerships, are they for the Bodhi 1 chip or is it across the, the uh, fundamental silicon? Well, definitely it will be for Bodhi 1 chip. And uh, uh, we are contemplating how much of collaboration we need to do for Bodhi 2. And uh, in parallel, we are also developing our own IPs and own innovations so that we are very self-sufficient in Bodhi 2. And I think part of that, when you talked at the Chiplet conference, you're talking a little bit about uh, the use of chiplets to sort of deliver on your vision. Maybe just remind our audience. So chiplets are small pieces of silicon, okay? They uh, are targeted for a particular function. And uh, we believe chiplets have huge advantages from a time to market perspective, from an effort perspective, from a cost perspective and from a power perspective. So the companies we are collaborating with, ARM and Antither, we are architecting in such a way that uh, uh, those can be built with chiplets and we, we co-build those chiplets and we assemble those chiplets in a package. Okay, so you're also looking at the advanced manufacturing technologies here as well, I guess. So the manufacturing uh, ecosystem is largely in Taiwan okay. and, and to some extent in the US. So we are in very advanced talks uh, with companies in uh, Taiwan, in the US, and also in Korea. And we'll be making those decisions shortly on who is going to be our manufacturing partner. Okay, now, now let's go back to the, the, the Bodhi uh, chip itself, the Bodhi one. What, are, I mean, how is it different to what else is being developed around the world? You've got so many AI chips around the world. What, what's your USP? Well, uh, the two USPs that uh, we are targeting, which is important for India market, uh, is cost and power. Okay. Okay. So we are heavily focusing how do we make sure we build uh, uh, chips uh, that are palatable to the in India, India consumers. Um, and the second is power. We are bringing in a lot of innovations 
at every level, at IP level, at a chip level, at a system level, at a platform level, how do we really drive power efficiency and sustainability in our products? So cost and power are the two USPs that we are targeting. Now, a lot uh, is incremental sort of improvements. Uh, are you targeting like more sort of significant improvements in terms of cost and power? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think this chiplet strategy will definitely help a lot in, in the cost and uh, both in R&D cost as well as the product cost. And uh, in terms of power, we are really going for uh, lots and lots of innovations. Uh, a technology called uh, in-memory computing is a key technology. Where, and that's part of the untethered AI uh, relationship uh, That's well. where we are collaborating yes. with that. Yeah. And uh, we are also looking at different innovations at a data center level uh, in terms of liquid cooling, immersion cooling, we are looking at innovations like that. We are also looking at innovations at a system level of how do we virtualize uh, the bulk of our AI computing so that uh, we can increase the utilization, uh, reduce the power, so we are looking at those, some of those technologies. And then uh, higher up, I mean, at a broader picture, uh, so you've got the chips, um, the edge chips are going out to the market for developers with the development kits, uh, and then you're, you're building data centers as well? Or? Yes, so uh, the Kutrim's vision is to deliver the complete AI stack okay. for India and the world. Yeah. It starts with uh, the Indic models, and then the cloud stack or the AI stack that supports those models. Then we're building our data center. We announced a gigawatt data center by 2028. We're building our data center. Yeah. And then we are building our own silicon to populate the data center. So it's a complete uh, stack of uh, data center. Mm -hmm. In addition, for AI to be delivered to the broader population, to the consumers, we are looking at uh, different type of edge products. And that's where OJAS comes in which will enable different type of edge products okay. that are, can be consumed by the broader population. And you already launched a, a, a service uh, equivalent to OpenAI for India, Kruthrim, haven't you? That's right. So we have uh, released uh, a, a Kruthrim AI model. Uh, we, we have around 10 million users of our Kruthrim AI application. Um, okay. It's a multilingual, uh, supports uh, 10 Indian languages, uh, okay. both text and audio. Right. And uh, we are actively develop, developing uh, bigger models, better models with richer data, richer content, and that will be rolled out uh, over time. Well, uh, I mean, uh, sounds all very good, but for our audience also, just tell us, I mean, you talked about Bodhi 2, 2028. What are the things you can tell us now about, you know, you, you said, you know, it's really uh, going to be the next generation. What, what, what does that mean? So the specs uh, we are targeting for Bodhi 2, uh, we believe that will be the best in class in the world. Uh, we have a fair idea where the world is uh, going in terms of uh, building AI chips. Uh, so our specs uh, indicate that will definitely be a, a best in the world at that point of time. And uh, we are building a lot of technologies that will help us achieve the specs. But the two USPs still remain very much in our minds. One is uh, cost, and the second is power. So those are the two USPs that we'll be so, targeting. So you'll be improving on those for both the two? We'll be absolutely be improving a lot on so, that. So it's further iterations? It's further, further iterations with newer technologies, as uh, newer fabrication technologies, newer packaging technologies, um, newer IPs, and our own innovations uh, come into play. Uh, the cost and power is where our targets are. Well, but, uh, uh, Sambit, so are you, are you enjoying this role? I mean, uh, a few months in, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. No, it's a great role. It's a, it's a great journey. I think uh, te technically uh, it's, it's a very advanced journey and uh, uh, great opportunity for innovation. Uh, but the biggest thing is that uh, we are trying to develop these systems for India uh, at a cost and a power target that India can afford. Okay. So uh, it's a great pride for me to work something that uh, will belong to India, that solves India's problems, and of course the world can benefit also. But that's a pride for working for India, 
in India and by India. The number of times I've been here uh, in India the last few years, I think I see that pride coming even more to the fore now. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, India has wonderful talent. I mean, we have around uh, 1.3 lakhs uh, uh, semiconductor engineers, 130,000 130, yeah. semiconductor engineers. Uh, um, uh, pretty much every chip in the world, it goes through India. Yes. So we have huge talent and opportunities are huge now. Yeah. Uh, demand is huge. Uh, the generative AI demand in India is expected to be around half a trillion dollars. Okay. So, uh, and uh, it's important for India uh, because of a lot of the geopolitics and uh, concerns around that. It's important that India owns its own IPs, technologies, chips, systems. Uh, uh, that's, that's the purpose. Well, Sambit, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. It's a pleasure talking to you. And uh, all the best. Thank you.